Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Bruce here. Um, today I'd like to do a posting in response to Glenn Calloway, um, who is over in the States and has requested that um, to try and push his subscription up. I mean, he was trying to move towards a thousand. I think he's already got there as we speak. But anyway, uh, he's got a competition to talk about three progressive rock albums um, from your collection. Um, Mazzy, Norn Masloff had done a variation upon that and showed um, some diss by Procol Harum, since which time, of course, you may have heard that Gary Brooker, their lead singer, has died. Um, but uh, Mazzy was arguing that his choices were not actually, strictly speaking, uh, prog rock choices, although he was leaning towards the idea that they were. But you know, perhaps that's a contentious issue. Um, my three choices were probably less contentious. Uh, I've chosen two which I particularly like. One which I don't really give a lot of love to these days, but uh, I, I, there is one particular track on there which I, I, I absolutely love. So I, I, hopefully I can inject a bit of passion into that one when I come to talk about it. Um, let's get on with it. Anyway, my first choice um, is the... Uh, second album I believe by the um, Canterbury based band Caravan and it's called If I Could Do It All Over Again I'd Do It All Over You there it is um, this one was released on, on Decca Records I'll show you the back cover there as well with pictures of the band um, looking you know suitably freaky on the back um, yep this is you know got all the elements of prog in it it's got you know tricky time signatures, multiple sort of um, interplay between the instruments. The organ player on here particularly, um, what was his name now? Was it Richard Sinclair? Yeah, uh, no, not Richard. It was it was the, the David Sinclair, that's right. They were cousins, I believe, the bass player and the keyboard player. Um, really good organ player, really great organ breaks on it. The guitar, you know, less interesting, perhaps, of the, of the four instruments on there. But uh, this is a wonderful album. You know, the cover gives you a very good flavour as to what it's about. Uh, to me, it's the sound of a British summertime. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's got elements of jazz. There's the label. Let's have a look at that. Uh, I hope that I got that the right way up for you. It's actually on Decca. I think this is a, a slightly later press. Uh, let's have a look at the other side. There we are. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you, you know, they really were quite, uh, quite British in their sound. Um, they sang in English accents. Um, as I say, there's elements of folk and jazz and all kinds of things going in there. It's really nice the way in which, uh, particularly, um, I think it's the second track, um, segues into all kinds of sort of different moods with flute, saxophone, everything. There, it's a great album. It really is. I, I would say that's a must-have. Uh, it's released in 1970. So there we are. Um, and apparently, the title, um, you know, very saucy. That was a typical sort of. Um, motif of Caravan was to have these titles. Uh, I believe I read somewhere that it was quoted from Spike Milligan, but I'm not sure about that. Anyway, so that's my first choice, Caravan. If I could do it all over again, I'd do it all over you. Um, the second one uh, is, I don't get to play very much, as I suggested earlier, and it's by the, uh, I think they're a London-based band, uh, kind of bluesy, jazz rock, uh, I think they were an offshoot of something like John Wales Blues Breakers, and that's Coliseum. And this is, I think, about their third album. Um, it's called Daughter of Time. I think it's the album which Chris Farlow joined only briefly with the band. Um, sorry, let me show you there. It's, this one's a gatefold. It's got a picture of the band and lyrics inside there. Um, yeah, Chris Farlow best known for his number one single out of time and it was released in 66 you know had a sort of quite a growly um soulful voice and uh yeah he he does the vocals on this one what i particularly like about this one i think this one's again it's it's on the vertigo swirl label it's a probably a second press this um there we are if 
Unfortunately, someone's written there, Tony, Mr. Tony Taylor's written their name on the label. Uh, the first track on the B side on here is written by, I think, Jack Bruce, and it's called Theme from an Imaginary Western. It's an absolute, you know, cracking tune. Great stuff, that. Um, it's, yeah, it really builds nicely. Um, it's got, the, you know, that is, for me, the, easily the best track on that album. I'll give it another listen soon and you know, maybe review my, my opinion a bit. My third choice is it, perhaps a little bit uh, more unusual. It's a later one. Yes, it is prog, um, although it's very sort of stripped down, um, uh, edgy sounding, as everything he did was. And that's by Peter Hamill and it's called Sitting Targets. It's a later solo album by him. I think it was released in 1981. Um, it's on the Virgin label, uh, and it's got those elements, um, you know, of new wave punk sound in it. I know that Peter Hamill was quite influential on people like John Lydon. Um, you know, his his take on prog music is much much edgier than. Um, you know, someone like Yes or Emerson, Lake and Palmer, which is more pastoral, sort of orchestral sounding, um, slightly, you know, effete in, in my view. But his stuff is, is none of that. It's very edgy. Um, it has very quiet, soft, almost whispered passages in it. Um, and then he's, he tends to sort of have this bleak howl. Um, and it's really driven. Uh, I think he played most of the instruments on here, apart from drums. Um, and it's just, you know, it is fantastic. There's one song here called My Experience that, you know, I'm surprised it wasn't a hit. It's great sort of new wave sounding um, uh, number. But yeah, so those are my choices. I'll enter the competition um, with, with uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, with, with Glenn Calloway, and let's see how I fare. I hope you enjoyed those. Uh, you know, drop some uh, comments down below. I hope you subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again soon. Okay, thanks. Bye.